so hello students welcome to ifs so today we are learning a very good concept a very good reaction called schwann oxidation okay so there are many oxidation reaction we have learned but uh, between them schwann oxidation a very good method to oxidize alcohol to aldehyde or ketone okay so let's start in schwann oxidation we generally see that a alcohol that may be 1 degree or 2 degree it is converted to a ketone it may be aldehyde or ketone in presence of dmso di dimethyl sulfoxide dmso and cocl cocl hole 2 okay in presence of dmso and cocl hole 2 and in the second step we use a base or the amine base we use here okay now the swan oxidation of alcohols offers a method that eliminates the need for toxic metals like chromium and allows for operation under exceptionally gentle condition now see what happened in uh, in many cases in many oxidation reaction we use k2cr2o7 or mn kmno4 or many like PCC, pyridinium, chlorochromate, PDC or we can say we use Jones reagent, Collins reagent. In every re re reaction or in every reagent we use the reagent that is you know, that uses metal or metallic condition and we know that in such a metal condition is not good for our health. Okay, so because to get rid of metallic condition or a hazardous condition, we use this kind of reaction. Okay, where uh, where we can easily oxidize alcohol to aldehyde or ketone. Okay, now in this case we use DMSO, which is which has high electro, uh, high temperature, high boiling point, and we use COCl2, and after that we use NRT. So in this process enables the synthesis of aldehydes from primary alcohol that means we will get 1 degree alcohol to aldehyde and 2 degree alcohol to ketone. Okay, so we get all 1 degree alcohol to aldehyde and 2 degree alcohol to ketone. Now the thing is that notably aldehydes do not undergo further reaction to form carboxylic acid in this concept. Now we know that in many cases in many cases we see that like K, K2Cr2O7, KMnO4 we see that over oxidation occurs that means alcohols are over oxidized to carboxylic acid but we just need that aldehyde state we need to further reaction uh, do further reaction in aldehyde with aldehyde so how we can con uh, convert the alcohol to aldehyde now this is the process the swan oxidation is very is a very good process to convert that kind of conversion okay now in this case an undesirable aspect is this generation that's the foul smelling byproduct dimethyl sulfide now in this case a byproduct we will get that is me2s this is also the characterization of that uh, of this kind of uh, reaction that in swan, uh, swan oxidation if we get the foul smelling uh, compound or foul smell of uh, ME2S that means the reaction is completed yet okay now getting forward आगे बढ़ते हैं तो इसके अगर मेकैनिज्म में हम अगर हम लोग जाए तो लेट्स सी द मेकैनिज्म ऑफ दैट ऑफ दिस ऑफ दिस रिएक्शन सो एट फर्स्ट द डीएमएसओ व्हाट हैपेंड एट फर्स्ट at first the dmso what uh, what it do what it did that dmso that pi bond of dmso attached to the cocl2 and it it gone uh, it have uh, rearranged and the chlorine cl minus leave then after that that cl minus attached to that position and uh, and forms this kind of pro, uh, this kind of <coughs> this <coughs> and forms this kind of intermediate so the intermediate we get in this so an oxidation is this so nowadays we must remember the intermediates because there are some questions that uh, we can say that in swan oxidation what will be the intermediate of swan oxidation okay now in, in swan oxidation we get the intermediate that is dimethyl sulfochloronide okay now this reaction after this 
after this um, intermediate in presence of alcohol what happened in the alcohol has <coughs> elect uh, electrons that is lone pair and it will attack to the electron deficient section of sulfur now after that after this sulfur addition we get this kind of intermediate and a rearrangement occurs that there will be a negative charge that is ch2 minus and it will came towards this position and in this case in the first first step the chlorine will remove as an hcl and will uh, after this this ch2 minus now how come this ch2 minus come because we use nr3 and this nr3 will take a, an electron from this position nr3 positive so will uh, nr3 negative will take a electron from this position and there will be a negative charge form and a rearrangement occurs that the uh, negative charge come into this position and this double bond come into this sulfur okay so this uh, this negative charge come into this position and this will go for, uh, go for the sulfur okay now uh, this negative charge comes this to hydrogen and this will go okay this will come there will be a double bond and this bond will break okay so this bond will break and we'll get a ketone we'll get a ketone and dimethyl sulfoxide so this is the similar mechanism this is the main mechanism of the swan oxidation now coming forward that why is the temperature is very low okay now if the temperature is not very low the negative charge cannot go uh, cannot take the hydrogen or the proton from this position it will come to this oxygen and forms this kind of product okay this kind of ether or sulfur ether product okay so the because of this because of you know, we have to put the reactivity very less that's why we put the reaction at minus 78 degree centigrade or less than minus 50 degree centigrade so that is also a drawback but it, it can achievable by using some liquid nitrogen or some some reaction condition okay now after that what will be the stereochemistry of the product now here we will see that there will be no change in stereochemistry of the of reactant into the product now in the reactant in a for example in the reactant we use this kind of stereochemistry or this kind of chiral center in a react uh, in a reactant now because there are no enolization takes place in the final step so that's why we can say that the final product that's why we can say that the final product will don't have any change in the stereochemistry as well as not in the chiral center as well as they, if there is ej in the uh, geometrical isomerism uh, isomers are there or geometrical isomerism showing uh, there so they are also uh, it it will not change in the final product okay now coming forward that is reaction without the base now if we don't use the react uh, base if you don't use the base then what happened then we see that the base is coming to the uh, third uh, third step now in the base we can say this this will not form from this position that is r we can say so if you not use base then this r r oxygen sulfur ch2 CH3 and CH3 okay and there will be hydrogen so this will not, uh, not form okay so they, uh, because we have to form this so we use NR3 power NR3 and it will take proton and there will be negative charge and this negative charge comes to this and this will form and this will out so because <coughs> if we don't use uh, base so it will form this kind of chloro product it will addition it will or, or we can say substitution of chlorine forms how uh, how it happens that is in presence of this it will form a chlorine minus nucleophile from this it will uh, we can see in the first step there will be chlorine minus there will be no, cl minus happen okay so because of this there will be cl minus as a byproduct so this cl minus will be a greater nucleophile than this uh, sulfur <coughs> this this compound okay so therefore in the uh, absence of the base we will get this compound rather than this so the uh, base use of base is much needed for the for the swan oxidation okay in the second step okay thank you for watching this happy learning guys